morning. I am Reverend Cassie Rapko and I am the pastor of St. Paul United Methodist Church. And I'm so glad that you are with us this morning to come and celebrate the good news of God's love. As we begin this morning, I have a couple of announcements for you. The first is that in the description of this video, you'll see a link to our online order of worship. Not only is this a useful tool for following along with our worship service this morning, but it also has links to pertinent information for the life of the church. First and foremost on that is our online connect card. I encourage all of you to go and fill out that online connect card. It allows us to know that you are worshiping with us and helps us to say hello back to you and to give you a little bit of information on us. So I encourage you to do that. But I also encourage you to comment below with a good morning or an alleluia or this is the day that the Lord has made so that we can be together during worship during this time. Now friends, some of these announcements I have are really exciting for you. First and foremost, tomorrow evening, so on Monday, August 3rd at 7 p.m., our women's group is going to be meeting online uh, for a time of devotion and fellowship. You can find the Zoom information for that on our online order of worship. Also tomorrow night, so Monday, August 3rd, we are gonna have a youth group mystery heist. 
on Zoom as well. This is a really exciting way for our youth to be together for fellowship and fun. If you have a youth that is interested in participating in this, go ahead and RSVP to Miss Annie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries. Um, her email address is annie at stpaulgrantpark.org and you can also find that on the online order of worship. And finally, friends, we continue to encourage you to give in whatever ways you can. I have been so grateful for your generosity during this time. It's because of your generosity that we're able to be a good neighbor in Grant Park. Truly, you are making a difference in our community and in the world. And so friends, continue to give your tithes and offerings to the Lord. You can do that by sending a check to the St. Paul office at 501 Grant Street, Southeast Atlanta, Georgia, 30312. Or you can go to our website at www.stpaulgrantpark.org and click on donate. Or you can text the amount that you would like to give to 844-926-2169. And again, all information for how to give is found on that online order of worship. And so now, friends, I invite you to find yourself in a posture of praise as we continue to worship this morning. Hey, St. Paul, Melanie Faust here for the Passing of the Peace. It's been so good to be worshiping with you all again. And so peace be with you. My name's Phoebe. My name's Spencer. My name's Elliot. And I'm Jack, and this is how we pass the peace. Peace be with you, Spencer. Peace be with you, Phoebe. Peace be with you, Elliot. Peace be with you, too, Spencer. Peace be with you, Dad. Thank you, Elliot. Peace be with you as well. And peace be with you, St. Paul. We miss you and love you and hope to see you soon. Bye. We love you. Bye. We love you.
A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verse 22 to 31. The same night, he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. The word of God for the people of God. This week's story is one of the most famous stories in the whole Bible. And it's a really kind of strange one because it's about a man who wrestles with God. I know when I was little, I used to fight with my siblings all the time. And sometimes it would end in wrestling, which I never recommend because it is not good for anything or anyone. But Jacob wrestled with God. Can you even imagine wrestling with God? But the story became the most one of the most famous stories in the Hebrew Bible because it's what we do every day, right? When we're thinking about decisions, when we are moving throughout our lives, talking to our friends, right now when we're staying home all the time, sometimes we wrestle with God. Like, God, why is COVID happening? Why doesn't my friend wanna play with me? Things like that are all too common. And if Jacob, one of the most prominent characters in the Bible, though he has his flaws, can wrestle with God and it ends up okay, that means you can too. So I hope you wrestle with God this week a little bit, and I hope that it all ends up good. What are you afraid of? We're all afraid of different things. Some things make sense to be afraid of, but other things, well, there's a reason that they call them irrational fears, right? I mean, many of us have irrational fears. Cramp spaces, spiders, rats, snakes, lots of different things. For me personally, I have ornithophobia, probably said it wrong, but it's an abnormal and irrational fear of birds. I don't know if I watched too much Alfred Hitchcock as a child or what, but birds just freak me out a lot, which for everyday living isn't really a big deal, except when, you know, really large birds are seen flying around my neighborhood. Other times, however, it is a bigger deal. For instance, one year my husband Chris and I had the opportunity to go to Costa Rica on a mission trip. And while we were there, we spent our free day at a nature park. It was great, they had waterfalls, different animal rescues, even a butterfly garden. But they also had an aviary, you know, a place to keep birds. Now, Chris was interested in going into the aviary because he wanted to see the toucans. So reluctantly, out of love, I agreed to do a quick, straight walkthrough of the aviary. I didn't want to dwaddle, I'd linger, I wanted to go straight in and straight out. So we went in, only to discover that you could get a toucan to sit on your shoulder. As you can imagine, I passed on this opportunity, but Chris was super excited about it. So the workers in the aviary did what they do to get a toucan to land on Chris's shoulder. Meanwhile, I was keeping a respectful distance and just waiting for it all to be over. But then, out of nowhere, two of the other toucans in the aviary started to fly straight toward me. They were swooping down and dive-bombing my head. It was terrifying! Meanwhile, Chris and the other workers were all just laughing their heads off. Needless to say, this did not help with my fear of birds. But we all have fears. And sometimes these fears can even turn to dread. Have you ever experienced dread before? I know I have. Usually it's when we have to do something really hard. It's when I have to step out of my comfort zone and confront a person 
or a situation. Generally, this is when I have to confront someone that I have wronged or someone that I've had an argument with. Dread is a whole new category of fear. And when we dread something, it ends up being the only thing we can think of. It keeps us up at night. It's constantly at the back of our mind and it just causes everything in life to be a struggle. Well, in our scripture message for today, we hear the story of when Jacob, who is later named Israel, who is dreading something, and as a result has an epic struggle, not only with himself, but with God. Now, this week my plan was to venture away from our Stranger Things theme and to dive back into the lectionary readings, except when I went to see what I had was planned for this Sunday, I had to laugh because today's text is still pretty strange. In today's text, our main figure, Jacob, has a wrestling match with God. Now, some background information to this passage might be helpful. You see, Jacob has always been considered a trickster in scripture. His name actually means one who grasps the heel or one who supplants. And he's had plenty of experience being at odds with his brother Esau or his father Isaac. He's tricked them both and as a result had to flee for his life. And then he's become wealthy by also tricking his father-in-law Laban. And now that his flocks and herds have grown so large that they threaten the relationship between the two men, Jacob has decided to take his chances and return home. The only problem is his brother will be there. And Jacob doesn't have a great relationship with him. In fact, Jacob originally left home fleeing his brother's wrath because he not only stole a birthright from him, but he also stole his blessing. So facing Esau again doesn't exactly sound all that great to Jacob, especially when he hears at the very beginning of the chapter in Genesis 32 that Esau is coming to greet him with 400 men. At that news, Jacob was terrified and felt trapped. He isn't sure what's going to happen, so he sends his family away to what he hopes is safety while he spends the night alone before meeting with his brother. And of course, this is where the main action of our passage starts. Think about a time when you had to do something hard the next day. Generally when this happens, sleep isn't an easy thing to find. You stay wide awake thinking of scenarios in your head, or maybe that's just me, but I don't think so. Essentially, you spend all night wrestling with yourself. And that's exactly what Jacob did, except for him, this wrestling left his mind and became tangible. He spent the night physically wrestling with someone. Jacob struggled. But we aren't ever explicitly told who this wrestler is. We're just left with the assumption that he is either God or a messenger from God. And certainly that was also Jacob's analysis of the situation. And there's this sort of inbuilt mystery to this story because it all takes place in the darkness at night. And because it was dark, we don't know anything about the appearance of the man, about this wrestler. At no point is there any description of him. And we're not given any description about the fight either, except that at one point the wrestler struck Jacob's hip and put it out of joint. The whole event is shrouded in mystery an event in the darkness, an event without any adequate description whatsoever. But in the hiddenness of the story, there are some really important observations, I think, about how to cope with stress and struggle in our own lives. And the first point to make is that, actually, I think this lack of detail in the story is one of the most important aspects of it. What we want, of course, is clarity. We want to know all the details. We want to know the identity of the man. We want to know the reason why this wrestling match was happening in the first place. We want to know exactly how the wrestling happened, what the ebb and flow of the battle was and how long it lasted. We want information. We want control. Instead, we're just left to sit with the mystery of it. 
And that, I think, reflects something of the nature of struggle and stress itself. Because when we experience trauma and go through periods of deep struggle, we are often confronted by emotional enemies that we can't really see. We lose control and we feel like we're swirling out of our own mind. We contend with emotions we can't name. We have fears for the future that we can't describe. Very often during times of deep struggle, we feel completely and utterly in the dark. We have to do battle against very strong emotions, and none of it seems to make any sense at all. What will the world be like in a year? How can I keep my family safe? What am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? Will my child be all right? Will my parents be all right? Will I be all right? It doesn't matter how long something has been happening. These are the fears that many of us have right now in this time in history. They don't go away. But in the same way, I think we as a society are also wrestling. We're wrestling with the way our nation works, about how best to put people first. We've been confronted with the realities of what happens when childcare goes away, when violence erupts on the streets, with what happens when school lunches are no longer available. We're confronted with what happens when one paycheck after another is missed. We are in this wrestling match right now. And I was thinking about this this week as I was watching the funeral for Representative John Lewis. John Lewis was a man who knew about struggle and knew about wrestling. He spent many nights wrestling with God and wrestling with the world. And yet he continued. He continued because he knew that the end result was worth it, that the dawn would come. He knew that love required it of him. He was once quoted saying, what I try to tell young people is that if you come together with a mission and it's grounded with love and a sense of community, you can make the impossible possible. His love of others grounded him in his mission. His love of others is what carried him through, just like Jacob's love for his brother, even though he was afraid. It's what carried him through. And in the midst of this wrestling, Jacob declared that he had seen the face of God. And if Jacob's analysis was right, and this man was God, then we know that God is also with each of us in our struggles, that God was with John Lewis in his struggles. And that as we struggle, wrestle, so God wrestles too. As we hurt, so God hurts with us. Our struggle is God's struggle, and God's struggle is our struggle. We are united with God in the wrestling match of the cosmos. And even though we struggle and wrestle, we too can see the face of God. How, you might ask? Well, it's in each other. There's a line from, the Victor, from Victor Hugo's Les Miserables that especially comes to mind. It says, to love another person is to see the face of God. I know that in the midst of my own struggles, when I look into any of your faces, I see God. And I know that this is a harder feat to do these days than it used to be, but I still see you. When I look into the face of my husband or the face of my daughter, I see God. And while the struggle is still there, I can see that I am not alone. We are not alone. The world is not alone. The song from Les Mis goes on to say, Do you hear the people sing, lost in the valley of the night? It is the music of a people who were climbing to the light. For the wretched of the earth, there is a flame that never dies. Even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise. They will live again in freedom in the garden of the Lord. We will walk behind the plowshare. We will put away the sword. The chain will be broken and all men will have their reward. Friends, we struggle, but come dawn, the struggle will end. There is a new day with the dawn and it is on its way. But in the meantime, we struggle but know that the struggle will not last forever. We all have fears, we all have dreads, but we don't do it alone. When we love others, when we share love with others, we can see the face of God, and we know that we can make it to the dawn. So whatever it is that you are struggling with, know that you are not alone. We are all with you, God is with you. And the dawn, well, it's on the way. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Take my hand, I'll lead you to salvation. Take my love, for love is everlasting. And remember the truth that once was spoken. To love another person is to see the face of God. Do you hear the people sing, lost in the valley of the night? It is the music of the people who are climbing to the light. For the wretched of the earth, there is a flame that never dies. Even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise. They will live again in freedom in the garden of the Lord. They will walk behind the plowshare. They will put away the sword. The chain will be broken and all men will have a reward. Will you join in an ardor say? Who will be strong and stand with Somewhere beyond the barricade is there a world you long to see? Do you hear the people sing? Say, do you hear the distant drums? Is it the future that they hear when tomorrow comes? Will you join in our crusade? Do we strong and stand with me? Somewhere beyond the barricade. Friends, I don't know about you, but during this time of unknown, during this time of struggle that we're all facing, it can be hard to find time to reflect. It can be hard to find time to be in prayer for others, for ourselves. It can be hard to just be still. But I also find that in the midst of everything that's going on, I need those moments. That when I make time for those moments, I am able to better reflect for the rest of the week. I'm better able to spend time with God and to nourish my own soul. And so friends, I encourage you to find time during the week. It can be just five minutes, but find time during the week to be in prayer. To be in prayer for yourselves. There's nothing selfish about praying for yourself. And to be in prayer for others. And during this time, if you have prayer requests that you would like to share, I invite you to comment with those below so that we can all be in prayer with you during our personal time of prayer. But if you also have something on your hearts and minds that you would like to share and you would like to share it confidentially, feel free to submit those prayer requests on our website. If you go to www.stpaulgrantpark.org, you will find the link for sharing those prayer requests. It's also available on our online order of worship to make it easier to find. And so now friends, I invite you to calm your soul, to clear your mind as we go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Lord, we are filled with a mixture of feelings today. Some of us are rejoicing in the wonderful time of rest and relaxation, while others continue to seek relief from the burdens and worries that they bear. But all of us stand in need of your refreshing and nourishing love and forgiveness. You know how many times we have turned our backs on those in need. We have been too busy, too preoccupied with our own problems cause us to turn around and see instances in which we can be of help and comfort to someone else. 
Give us strength and courage to truly be your loving disciples in the ways in which we care for others. Forgive us when we stray from the paths of righteousness and peace. And Lord, today we've heard the story of Jacob as he wrestled with the angel, how he asked for the angel to bless him. We too come to you for blessing. There are so many times in our lives in which we have felt alienated, downtrodden, alone, in the midst of turmoil and struggle. And it's easy for us to wallow in our misery, to whine about all the perceived injustices that have been heaped upon us. But you encourage us to stand strong, to seek the blessings that you have provided us, to recognize the many ways that you are with us, giving us strength and courage. Help us to see your face and our love for one another. Be with us again, precious Lord, and guide our lives. And Lord, this day we have brought our prayers before you and those near and dear to us. We seek healing and hope for them. And let us also remember that those same mercies are lavished upon us, not because we deserve them, but because of your great and generous love for us. Help us receive these blessings and in turn be a blessing to someone else. And Lord, we ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray together no matter where we are, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from a world of care and be struggles. We all wrestle. But to love another person is to see the face of God. And so know that in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our wrestling, that we are not alone. God is with us. That our struggle is God's struggle and God's struggle is ours. And then go share that love. We have a great capacity for love. And it's through that that we will make it to the dawn. We will make it to the other side. So in the name of the one who creates and redeems 
and sustains. Go in peace. Amen.